It's been so far and C Sharp 11 has just been released. Let's check out what's new. Hi everybody, welcome once again. My name is Fani Reinders and in this channel we look at everything .NET to Azure and everything in between like the new C Sharp 11 that has just landed a couple of days ago. We'll be taking a look at a couple of features in my opinion that is new and it's awesome. So let's quickly take a look. But before we do that, hey, how about you kind of subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't done so before and please, please hit that little bell icon to kind of be notified the next time I push new content content. And if you want, write me a little message in the comments down below to give me some feedback. All right, now let's quickly take a look at the features. So the first feature I would say is cool is generic attributes. Here, previously, we would have done something like this. If we have a awesome attribute, for instance, and we need to have a type uh, used in our attribute, we normally are bound to kind of uh, pass that type in into the constructor previously. But now with C Sharp 11, it allows us to do things more neatly. In this case, we can have a type of T that we now can have a generic type of attribute, which will allow us then to get rid of the uh, actual constructor really. We can actually remove this whole line here and we can now just say instead of type we can say t this will now allow us to specify a generic type in our attribute for instance now we can get rid of this whole thing and we can now say for instance int and there we go Bob's your uncle one good thing to note is that because we don't have any arguments in our constructor now we can actually get rid of these brackets and have an even neater output of our code Imagine we have a uh, interface that we defined here called iAwesome with a method, a static method that we define here that just adds two numbers, the left one and the right one, it adds them together. So to add generics to this function, we can actually just replace all the ints with a T, right? And um, we can just add the T in here. We also need to define what T is. So then we can say where T is I numeric of T. And of course, we need to include the system numeric in the usings above. This will allow us to have a generic type of T types to be added together. Just note that any type that implements I numeric type of T needs to have a operator for a plus and a divide. Let's talk about pointers. So this is a very small addition. One of the things is that we currently have, uh, like for instance, uint or int pointers. In this example, I've got a pointer PT that points to the value of foo here in this case. And uh, what they've done is really allows us to, um, instead of writing it like this, like in PTR, you can just write it like n int like that. And that's basically the same thing. Actually, the whole thing can go out like so. And in my opinion, this just looks much more cleaner and probably leans towards the whole C language a bit more. One of the other things that's very cool is multiple line string interpolation. So previously in C Sharp 10, we are limited to have string interpolation in a single line, but in C Sharp 11 changes that, like in this example now, allows us to do multi-line string interpolation by kind of defining anything between the braces is valid C-sharp code. And you can do like funky things like this uh, switch here that's much more readable in my opinion. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about list patterns. So in terms of pattern matching, uh, imagine we have a, uh, an array of numbers, one, two, three. We can have a result that will evaluate true if the numbers is one, two, and three explicitly in that order and including those values. But Given that we have, for instance, an array and we, and we want to match it towards numbers is one, two, and four, this will evaluate false because three isn't part of the range. But, but also if you have additional numbers that will also evaluate false. Given that we have one, two, three, and four, it will evaluate false because it's an array, but it also contains more numbers. What's also very cool is that you have the ability to kind of do conditional things like operators like an or for instance zero or one which is true and if it's smaller or two and if it's bigger or three then if everything succeeds it is true pretty amazing raw string literals is quite cool so given a certain example that we have now previously to c sharp 11 we have a message like this this is a long string and it adding tabs is supported now 
this is okay and it works. But imagine you can do things like uh, triple quotes, right? And then it will allow us to kind of format the whole thing by removing all of these things, all of these quotes, and it will just make it way more readable. You can even have a whole tab in there and it will also render um, accordingly. The way it works is everything uh, that precedes this closing quotes will be removed from the string above, which will give you the indentation that we want. So by default, everything is compiled to UTF-16 in the compiler. Previously, when we have to kind of get a UTF-8 uh, from a string, we would do something like this example here by getting the bytes first from a message and then using the encoding UTF-8 get string function to get a UTF-8 uh, version of that string. Now with C 11, it makes it quite easy. We can now just kill all these um, string members and we can now denote that with a U8 um, number there. We can also get rid of the namespace there and Bob is your uncle. That is it. And that's how you get a UTF-8 string. This U8 suffix will actually do all the hard work for us to convert a, a UTF-16 to UTF-8 strings for us. Okay, now another thing is uh, required members. So given that we have a certain class, like a person class with a first name, a middle name, and a last name, and obviously we have a string um, that's first name and last name that's clearly not uh, nullable, but we have a middle name that's nullable. And, you know, having a declaration like person is a new person is perfectly fine, right? And we wanted actually to kind of break whenever the, the constructor is initialized without providing those values, right? So that is fine. Now, if we want to actually stop that from happening, we can make use of the required um, keyword by just adding a required in here. Let's make a first name and last name required. Now, the next time we, for instance, compile this, we now get an error that last name must be set and also first name must be set, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, if we set the various in here, for instance, let's say, uh, let's say first name is John and last name is Doe, for instance, we will not get that error again and it will compile as we expect. Okay, now let's quickly talk about the file keyword. So the file keyword is quite new in C Sharp 11 and it allows us to kind of scope classes and interfaces, etc., to that one specific file. So in this case, we have a hidden widget in file one that is defined here. And we uh, actually have another class here using that same hidden wid widget in the same class, uh, like, like so. But then we have a different file that does not use the hidden keyword and it will be kind of assembly wide or solution wide implementation, also called hidden widget. And it doesn't conflict with the one that's declared in the other file one. And when we compile this down, it uh, also just works. Um, it's a kind of a way to scope namings and um, to kind of avoid uh, us having uh, conflicts in names. I'm not really sure about this one, but it's kind of a cool feature, I think. Right, that is it. And like always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, hit that little subscribe button down below to my channel. Until next time, folks. Bye-bye.